And Lorelei actually is really, really easy. And this really shouldn't come as much of a surprise considering four of her five Pokemon are water types. As is Bruno. All you need to do is use two seismic tosses against both Onyx. Thunderbolt one hit KOs both Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. Critical hits don't matter. Machamp can knock you out if you're at 100 health or lower and it hits you with submission or gets a critical hit with submission at any health. It's not likely to use it because Fissure is super effective, quote unquote. Agatha, she's not difficult. She's always annoying. But what I do is I mimic hypnosis, use hypnosis, then try and set up three agility. This is important. I need all three. The Gengar will then become a two hit KO. We actually use the agilities for the next two Pokemon though. Arbok can use Glare. That's a run ender. Don't want that. And this fight definitely took me a really long time to figure out. So Pikachu doesn't really have any great moves for dealing with dragon Pokemon. We have an electric move, seismic toss, and mimic. We're going to keep agility. I actually had taught reflect earlier thinking that would help, but agility helps quite a bit more. We're going to one hit KO the Gyarados with Thunderbolt because that's really dangerous. And then we're going to need Dragonair number one to cooperate. The idea is to mimic Hyper Beam and set up three agility to boost our attack. This is important because that will allow at our current level Hyper Beam to one hit KO both Dragonair, which is super useful. And in Generation 1, when Hyper Beam knocks out a Pokemon, you don't need to recharge. Definitely not the most consistent strategy I've ever used, but who cares? We're on pace to break Bulbasaur's record with the sixth worst Pokemon to do this? What? Who would have thunk this? The rival, however, is very challenging. And I am going to need to use Badge Boost, so I am going to level up, and that will cost me the record but allow me to maybe have a chance in this battle. Once again, we're going to set up against the Pidgeot because it can't do very much to us. But shockingly, we're going to mimic Sky Attack. I never, ever use Sky Attack on flying Pokemon. Who would use a two-turn attack? But with my current move pool, it is the best option. We're also going to set up three agilities, of course, and then knock out the Pidgeot with a Thunder. It will be a one-hit KO, and you shouldn't be taking too much damage. Unfortunately, Thunderbolt will not one-hit KO the Alakazam, and so you have two options, either you Sky Attack or try for two Thunderbolts. Probably should have gone for two Thunderbolts in retrospect. I'm not sure why I went for Sky Attack, but hey, I got to use Sky Attack in a run. Alakazam, very annoying. Loves to critical hit, confused with Psybeam. Ugh, like... I had so many runs end at Alakazam. I just, I love using Alakazam, but hate facing it. Now, we kept Seismic Toss solely for this Rhydon. It's going to take four Seismic Toss. And you'd think Rhydon could help by using Tail Whip or Leer to lower my defense, help with badge boosts. And if it hits with enough of those, it will. However, it does have Fury Attack, so it'll deal damage. And we do need our defense not being terrible for a later Pokemon. So, ideally, you just get rid of Rhydon as quick as possible. I wish I had a better way, other than obviously if I leveled up a little bit more, Seismic Toss would do just a little bit more damage, it'd be a 3-hit KO, but we're gonna tie the record if we do this. Gyarados, 1-hit KO with Thunderbolt. Arcanine is scary, that's why I don't want too many Leers. Takedown can deal significant damage, I get a Roar. Thankfully, with the Agility Boost, it's a 2-hit KO with Thunderbolt, and we have one. Pokemon remaining. All we needed to do was anything but a critical hit Razor Leaf. Oh my god. Now we just need Sky Attack to hit and we have done it. Pikachu ties Bulbasaur, beating the entire game at level 69. Oh boy, buckle up. What if we took one of the most iconic Pokemon of all time and single-handedly beat Pokemon Emerald? Nah, 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 nah. That, that's already been done. It's not really that difficult. But don't get me wrong, Japan Mickey Mouse isn't a good Pokemon by far. But let's just take it up a notch. Baby Pikachu! Pichu! Look at the stats on this big boy! That's not a lot of damage! And we finally made it to the Elite Four, and it's time to see just how far along this journey we have came. 
Hopefully this isn't a Lorelei situation where I can't beat the first- Oh my god, it is! I can't even beat the first Elite Four member who has a dark type Pokemon. Like, they're not even, like, super resistant against my moves. And I'm struggling hard here, boys. After trial and error with a whole bunch of different methods, it turns out that Rollout was our best guess. And uh, I go for the Rollout method and eventually take him out. The second Elite Four member was Phoebe, the Ghost type specialist. She starts with a Dust Skull that I managed to take out with a few Thunderbolts, but then she sends out the second Gust Bowl that knows Earthquake. Mmm, what'd you say? I go back to my save in front of Phoebe, and then in the first turn, she curses my Pichu that takes 25% of its HP every turn. So I guess it's time to take it back, daddy -o. Reverse, reverse, two hops this time. After battling the first two members over and over and over again, I end up making it to level 84, and I eventually make it through Phoebe, and this time, things are gonna be different. Psych! It wasn't until I made it to level 86 where I finally could scrape by past Phoebe and every turn I could have lost it. So we finally make it to the third Elite Four member, Glacia, and I'm getting Laura Live flashbacks and we finally beat her first try. Oh my god! Thunderbolt and Iron Tail cover her entire team's weaknesses. We might do it. I was really starting to lose hope here. It's time for the Dragon Trainer Drake. Right. His first Pokemon is really bulky. Shellgun is no joke, surprisingly. After taking it out eventually, after taking some decent damage in return he sends out flygon and i love me some fly it has earthquake too oh my gosh in no case scenario can we survive after eventually attempting enough times i get a crit return and it takes it out in one shot somehow after he sends out his altaria which he full restores many times and thunderbolt eventually takes out altaria Kingdra and Salamence go down with little to no room for error to think level 87 and we're still not high enough that worries me a little bit for the champion. Wait, where's Steven? You ain't my champion. Oh yeah, this is Emerald, and that's Wallace. This is gonna be a breeze. Wrong. He has Earthquake Wish Cash that in no scenario I can take out without leveling, so I have to attempt and fail the Elite Four until I'm actually level 100. I use my last rare candies that I picked up to get the last three levels, and it's now or never. Finally, the final battle. His Whale Lord is a one hit by T-Bolt, and his health takes a long time to reach zero though. Same goes for his Gyarados, but now it's his wish cash and this was rage inducing since I needed a crit, but after about 18 tries we finally got it and we and we can finally battle the rest of his team. Tentacruel was almost knocked out in one T-Bolt, he fully heals it and then I take it out the second time. Next is Ludicolio, next is Ludicolo who I opt for an old reliable T-Bolt and that ends up doing the job he did after he does two double teams. Time for his last Pokemon, Melodic. The extremely bulky wall of a Pokemon who survives one T-Bolt and takes him down to its berry and hits us really hard with Surf, bringing us to the red zone just before the second T-Bolt connects and we become Pokemon champions. Last big battle before the Elite Four and we've got the rival. This one is an absolute brick wall of a fight. Star Raptor is out first with Intimidate so I lose some attack and he often U-turns to Torterra who can one-shot me with Earthquake. My best move for him is an already weakened return that hardly hurts him, so this battle is a no-go right now. I'm gonna need to grind out more levels while I form a strategy. Now it's on to the real challenge, the Elite Four. I won't lie, I'm nervous about getting into this one, but I think I have a reasonable chance at this. Let me know if you think that I can pull off this challenge. First is Bug Trainer Aaron, and to my surprise, Thunderbolt completely sweeps his entire team. I was pretty surprised, I thought Scizor and Drapion would hang in there and get some hits, but it went as smoothly as it could've. Second for the Elite Four is Ground Trainer Bertha, and this is what I've been dreading the whole game. Thankfully, I have a plan. I replace Dig with Grass Knot and use Double Team at the start, then start sweeping. It's basically a Grass Low Kick, so it does damage based on weight. Ground Pokemon tend to be really heavy, so this bulldozes through them. Gliscor is too light to die on one Grass Knot, but Double Team let me dodge his Earthquake and pull out a victory. He would have one-shot me otherwise. Flint the Fire Trainer was a total pushover. I equipped Choice Specs so that I can only choose one attack, but get a 50% buff to my special attack, and then sweep his entire team with Thunderbolt. To my surprise, Psychic Trainer Lucian was also a sweep with Thunderbolt. I know I did EV training for special attack and I have Choice Specs on, but I'm really surprised that Pikachu was able to take out things like Alakazam in one Thunderbolt. It's on to the final battle with Pokemon Champion, Cynthia. No choice specs this time, I need more than one move. I know Garchomp is out second with Earthquake, 
so I have to keep attempting six double teams on Spear Tomb until I'm able to survive and pull it off. Many attempts in, and I finally get all six double teams without being hit. I get unlucky and crit Garchomp, causing him to end up with low enough health on the second attack after his berry to get full restored. Thankfully, he still kept missing and I was able to take him out. That would have been better if I didn't crit him, because then I would never activate the berry and I'd be able to take him out without him getting as many attacks in. Lucario goes down in one Thunderbolt, much to my surprise. I thought that thing was going to ruin me if it hit. Togekiss goes down in one shot, much more predictably, what with it being part flying type. Melodic also goes down in one Thunderbolt, and there's only one Pokemon left, Roserade. I remember how strong this thing is. I used one in my Pokemon Platinum Let's Play. I go for a Thunderbolt on the off chance that I paralyze it, because I know that it would survive either that or return anyway. I don't paralyze it though, so it goes for extra sensory after it survives, but it misses. That would have ended me for sure. A second Thunderbolt, and it's all over. I've beaten the challenge. Can you beat Pokemon Sun and Moon with only a Pikachu? More so to celebrate the fact that Ash won the league and all the spoilers. I got a lucky run where this Hakamo doesn't do anything to me. And then this Como misses a Sky Uppercut twice. And then on the final turn where it had to attack me to ruin it, he actually gets paralyzed and then we kill the Como. And then this Hakmo just dies in one shot. I mean, it just get out of here, bro. We head into the Lusamine fight in the Ultra Space. She's actually easier with the power up than she is without it. More so because I'm over leveled as hell and we steamroll through it. This Miss Maggie has used Pain Split instead of attacking me. And I regain HP and it lost HP and then it just died. So we head into Elite Four. Very beautiful looking Elite Four. We head into Hala's chamber and Hala's, you know. How close combat's me, I live it pretty easily and then we put it down with Thunderbolt. Well, we Z move is crap abominable because, you know, it's probably the strongest thing on his team that could live a hit from me. So, pretty easy and it's Polygraph, you know, water type, dead. Pikachu's too OP. Next up, we head into a rock chamber which we put on the grass Z move on this. And most of her Pokemons are pretty easy, her Relicamp goes down pretty easily. Um, her Probo Pass goes down easily, and then her Lycan Rock does not go down in one shot to my Grass Knot, and it Z moves me in return and always one hits me. So to fix this situation, we actually have to Z move the Lycan Rock, even though it is the worst Lycan Rock by stat wise and by usage, it still has to be Z moved down because it just takes the hit too well. And you know, this Golem would have killed me if it used any other move besides Steamroller, if it had Earthquake or anything, it would have just killed me, but. It just chose not to, and we beat it. Next up is the Ghost Elite Four member, which I mean, it's not terribly too hard. The only thing was is that that Delmise was a bit of an issue for me. Delmise lifts a lot of hits to me, but it doesn't do enough to me back. It chose to use Slam over everything, so I'm not complaining. I kill it eventually after like spam full restores, but we kill it. We kill it uh, with a crit, no doubt. And then Drifloon, of course, goes down pretty simple we're rolling we're rolling in guys we're rolling through finally the flying elite four member when i was thinking of this challenge i was like oh this flying elite four member is gonna be easy like that's the only thing i was thinking about oh man this flying elite four is gonna be easy not the other hard parts about the totems or the ground type uh hapu no i was just thinking about this flying elite four is gonna be easy and i'll show you how easy i thought about the skarmory is dead I done the both the Oracorio was dead. The Crobat outspeeds me, hits me, gets paralyzed, then I kill it. And then Mandibus comes out, I two hit KO it. Then I Z move the two cannon. And then we are on to the champion fight. It is a fitting ending to it. It's a fitting ending to the game and also kinda of fitting for the anime as well. You know, we fight uh Professor Kokoi at the end. Uh once the Snorlax gets down and gets paralyzed and then dies. The battle is so much easier, Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> this battle is so easy without the fucking Snorlax in the way, because it just tanks hits, but Braviary is dead with a crit, and then, just to celebrate the anime a little bit, at the end, we cheat in the special Pikachu Z move, just like the anime. A glorious finish, I say, and that's about it. We beat the challenge. Well, no, we didn't beat the challenge, because, you know, we got stuck with the double battle over there, but, uh... Besides that, we got pretty far uh, t into the game, and then, you know, if we skip that battle, we progress forwards, nothing really stops us, and we become champion. 